Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me. Today we are going to be talking about the new product at the Hostel Hair, uh, stackable cages. In the past, we've used the stackable style, but they've all been individual uh, 36 by 24 by 15 inch cages. And you need a frame in order to suspend them above the pans. Well, with this new design, we are going to be making uh, a cage system that is 54 inches tall, and it will have three 15 inch tall cage sections in it and allotting four inches in between each level to have space for a waste pan. What that will allow you to do is build a single cage unit that does not require a frame. When you get your order of stackable cages from Hostel Hair, you can get three in a box, and that is the cheapest way to ship them because three fit in the box uh, that's 37 by 25 by three inches tall. They flat pack, they come out of the box looking like this. And basically you just build them like so. You wanna make sure that the door opens out and that the half inch side of the cage is facing out as well. That's how I build my cages. It's when you purchase a cage from Hostel Hair, it comes semi-assembled. This top piece here, the two foot by three foot section, uh, is attached to all four sides, and the floor comes separate, and you just pin the sides together and put the floor in, and you're done. On the front of the cages, it's better to start at this junction here and go up. That way, if you connect it wrong here, you don't end up with kind of a weird bow in it. So you start here and work your way to the bottom, even though it's upside down currently, so this is the bottom. So we'll start in the corner, work our way up. So we actually throw one of these in with every order of three cages or more so that you have something to assemble. We also sell them on the site separate if you just get one cage or whatever, or if you already have one. You get one of these black handled J-clip pliers with the purchase of three cages or more. Now you get some variants on the uh, materials. It's inevitable when they weld the wire together. Um, these spaces will vary about an eighth of an inch. So these are about a quarter of an inch in thickness and they'll fit in the average three eighths space in between the wires. Now, one of the tricks that I've come up with is, well, first of all, you want this side of the cage material to be inside of the cage. This is the 14 gauge inch by half inch floor and you'll feel one side of it, the wire is spaced apart one inch. You see how this one inch wire is on top of the other wire? Now when we flip this around, you can see that the half inch side is on top of the other wire. So the half inch side is up. So you want this side to be up inside of the cage so that the rabbits can step on this and get the most amount of surface area to step on. So one of the tricks that I've learned building these cages is you, you, know, you set it in like you're gonna put it in just to make sure that it, it's facing the right direction. But then I'm going to flip this out like so. And I'm gonna put it against the, the front and just hold it in place. And I'm going to assemble it outside of the cage first. So what you want to do is have a J-clip every four inches or so. You can put more in if you want to, but more is really unnecessary. Unless you're keeping baby pterodactyls in the cage, it'll hold up with just one every four inches. And if you can get your hands on some baby pterodactyls, let me know. I would like to purchase a couple, maybe a breeding pair. If you've got a stick or something that you can 
put through the cage to hold this up. It's very helpful. What that does is keeps it kind of in the general area so you don't have to keep picking it up each time. This is kind of a tricky point to connect the floor to the side because you have to go in, let's see, one, two, three, four. You have to go in sideways and then bend the heck out of everything to get it upright. So what I do is I come in and I clip the piece right above where I'm sliding the tool in and you get much better penetration. All the way in there, grab a hold of that, pinch around it, and it doesn't bend the heck out of your cage. You got this little hole that goes in, not a big deal. Um, nothing is, it's not gonna let the babies out. The babies are all gonna be down in this area here, not up here, this is actually the bottom. So this is roughly what your cage should look like when it is complete. About like that. See how there's a four inch gap underneath of the front panel. And what we'll do is we'll add an under one of these on top of this, like so. Once you've got two of the cages built, you butt them up together and you leave this gap in between them. That's by design. That is where your waste pan will go per level. And then you just start pinning them together. When you're pinning these together, you have to get all three of the wires together. This is the front, this is the back, and I've got the front and the back pinned together. Now I'm gonna go along and connect every four inches or so. You'll notice there's a little bit more resistance when you're pinning the three wires together, just because there are three instead of two. And so you might have to use two hands just to give that extra crimp. All right, that's that side done. All right, for putting this next side together, I'm gonna come around on the other side of the bench. Get a little bit better angle. Sometimes you'll see that the wires spread out a little bit and you gotta kinda finagle them back into position. So, make it small, nice and close. <laughs> that way you can get a solid hook on it. There we go. It's still wiggling a lot because we haven't pinned the back together yet, which we can do now. Now each cage order comes with enough clips to do the cage and to drop 40% of the clips that I send you. So if you lose 40% of the clips, you'll still be able to assemble the cage completely. All right, so this is the Hostel Hair Stacker cage. It's just a double built on its side, fully connected. We're gonna flip it like so. This gives you the ability to go vertically in your rabbit tree. With this stackable cage system, we got away from the need of having an external frame. These two cages are pinned together and they share enough surface area that, you know, as you can see, there's not a whole lot of wiggle to them. They're very stout. There's enough space in there for an adult male or female rabbit, a female with the babies would be actually a lot more space for a male because he doesn't need an S-Box. Um, but this is perfect for people that have a smaller shed or lean to or don't have a whole lot of space uh, to raise rabbits and they don't have all of the ample side to side room that you get on some of these big long rabbit runs. Uh, even a triple cage that we build is nine feet wide. Whereas this fits in a three foot by two foot footprint and can go as many as four cages tall. I'm usually not an advocate for pull out pans, but sometimes you know, 
know, you have to raise your rabbits in an area where you can't spray the pans out. So you have to have a removable pan. And if that's what you have to do, this is the cage system to get that done. I appreciate you guys sticking around and watching me build this thing. If you've got any questions about raising rabbits, feel free to reach out to me, Nick at HostelHair.com. That's my uh, email address. And there's a lot of blogs on the website. You can go through and see what it takes to get started raising rabbits. There's blogs on um, what markets you want to get into and how to get into them. And just general shenanigans that we do out here on the Hostel Homestead. So stick around. You might learn something.